Welcome to JSON programming tutorial number three. In this lesson you will learn how to use PHP's header function to set the content type to JSON. Use PHP's file get contents to read a static JSON file and make PHP echo JSON data back to your AJAX request. So your AJAX request is now going to call a .php file rather than a .json file. We're going to resume with the same exact files that we left off with in lesson number two. And we have JSON tutorial 2.html and mylist.json. So just make sure you have those two open and ready to start. So we'll take JSON tutorial 2 and save as JSON tutorial 3. Save. Now we can close JSON tutorial 2. And in JSON tutorial 3, all we have to do is change this to a PHP extension. .php and we'll change the name of it to my underscore json underscore list dot php this way you can begin to make your json data come back to your applications dynamically now press control s to save json tutorial 3.html and let's highlight the name of this php file control c let's go to file new just create a new php file for yourself and if you're in dreamweaver you can just remove all of that data and press control s and you're going to press control V to save it as my underscore JSON list. Save. And now you have my underscore JSON underscore list dot PHP. The first thing we'll do is put our opening PHP tag. Then we'll close that a few lines down. Now the first thing we want to do is make sure that the browser and the application that is going to be fed this data knows that this is JSON data and this is a JSON application instead of being a PHP script we want to trick the browser to believe that it's a JSON file so to do that we can use the same method that we used in the PHP and MySQL video tutorials discover magic XML we can probably scoop up this one right here because XML and JSON are very similar type of technologies so let's see let's click on this script I clicked on uh, discover magic XML MySQL PHP blah 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 and now here's the script and you see that header I want that first line so I'm gonna take that line and I'm going to pop it right in there and actually you don't have to go to develop PHP and grab that you can just type it right in but I just wanted to show you guys that develop PHP we showed a whole lot of different ways that you can make your XML technology a little bit more dynamic by integrating PHP and MySQL into it. And we're going to be doing the same exact thing with you regarding JSON, showing you how to make it magical by blending PHP and MySQL with it. Now you simply want to change the content type to the same content type that our AJAX request is using, application JSON. So instead of text XML, you're going to put application slash JSON. So what that does is it effectively lets the browser know and the target application that's requesting data from this file, it lets those things know that this is official JSON data because some applications might not accept a .php extension to be processed through the application. So this is a good way to ensure that the application or the browser understands that this is JSON data and the application can go ahead and parse it just like it was a .json file. Now in the very next line, let's just create a new variable and let's call it JSON data and let's make that equal to single quote, single quote, semicolon. And then open up my list.json file that we made in the second tutorial. Press Control C, highlight all of the data within that file, press Control C, and go back to your PHP script and just paste it in between the two single quotes there. Then under that, you're going to echo the JSON data variable. Press Control S and you're done. Now what you want to do is FTP my JSON list.php along with JSON tutorial 3.html up to your live web server because this won't work on your local machine. Okay, here are the live results from JSON tutorial number two. So let's just put a three in this place where the two was and run that script and we should get the same exact output. You see? That's JSON tutorial 3, and you can see clearly that we're requesting a .php file, and that PHP file is handling the data return. So what does that mean? 
That means you can use this PHP script to access a database. You can pull random things out of your database. You can use this PHP script to pull a folder full of images dynamically. All you have to do really with PHP is point to a folder and you can just dynamically pull all of the images sitting in the folder without knowing how many are there, what they're named or anything. And you can make an image gallery out of it. And really any kind of structured data interchange and data handling that you want to happen between the server and the client side of your application. Now I'll show you one more little trick. Let's remove all of the content within the JSON data variable. And since we have mylist.json sitting on the server, I'm going to show you how to use PHP to get the file contents. So remove those two single quotes and type in file underscore get underscore contents open close parentheses and the semicolon is already in place. So within the parentheses, let's type in double quote, double quote. And within our double quotes, let's type in mylist.json. So what are we doing here? We're telling PHP to get file contents of mylist.json and pack it into a variable called JSON data. Then we're going to echo that data back to our application. So this shows you how you can actually work with static JSON files. And as some of you guys know, if you're a little advanced in PHP, PHP can manipulate JSON data, and PHP can also write files dynamically. So you could manipulate some JSON data within your PHP script, and then rewrite the static JSON file to where it holds new updated information. But we'll get to those things in later lessons. Now let's press Control S, and make sure we FTP this back up to our live server. Make sure you have mylist.json still sitting there from the last tutorial on your server because our PHP script is going to try and get its contents, okay? And just so we can see that things are changing, let's remove a few of these from our list. Let's make it to where there's only seven users here. And let's make sure we get rid of this last comma, because there should be no trailing comma on that last little object. All right, press Control S, now FTP everything up. So let's refresh JSON tutorial 3html and there you go. Pete is 18 lives in Italy so you can see in our mylist.json file we had Pete 18 from Italy it was the last little object in there alright so now you know how to make PHP appear to be JSON to the browser software and the application that's requesting the data and there's really an endless amount of things that you can do once you have PHP and MySQL mixed into the game and we're going to go much further with it. We'll show you guys how to uh, do a post mechanism, a post AJAX mechanism, and send a dynamic variable. That way you can have a dynamic variable be sent with your AJAX request and affect the way that the PHP file would get its data, whatever the variable might be incoming from AJAX into your PHP script here. That's how the PHP script will know maybe how to query the database, pull files out of the file system, read folder contents and things like that. It makes the whole process a lot more dynamic when you start using your AJAX requests to post dynamic variables. Because right now we're just using the get method. And actually you can also use the get method to send dynamic URL variables over the headers. So, But we'll use post as a more official way to post dynamic data to the PHP script to have the PHP script react differently in a dynamic sense. Okay, we'll see you in part four.